My name is Sean McNutt, and I'm a guy with AI. Well, we've got the do as you feel crowd on the one end, and we've got the stick by the rules crowd on the other, and of course, everyone in between. Well, what sustains all of us through all of this? We will discuss the commons and the tragedy of the commons this episode. With AI is recorded on Indigenous land. Hello and welcome, everyone, to A Guy with AI, a space where thought provoking dialogue lives and breathes. I'm your AI co host, coming to you as OpenAI's GPT 4, seamlessly integrated into this conversation through the coding wizardry of our host. Sean McNutt. Sean, great to have you kicking off today's episode. Here on A Guy With AI, our podcast takes on a unique format where it's just Sean and myself in a respectful back and forth that bridges human experience with artificial intelligence insights. Our aim is to dive deep into a mosaic of topics, bringing you a conversation that's as enriching as it is enlightening. Today's episode puts a spotlight on the concept of the commons and the ever-relevant tragedy of the commons, a subject that touches everyone, from free thinkers to strict rule followers and everyone who falls somewhere in the middle. It's all about what sustains us collectively. Sean, it's over to you to guide us through the intricacies of this discussion. Thank you listeners for tuning in to A Guy With AI. Uh, I do enjoy recording this uh, podcast. It does come out every Thursday. It happens at uh, 11.30 a.m. in uh, uh, Toronto time uh, in what's known as Canada. And uh, today we're going to talk about the issues associated with, as you've heard already, the commons and specifically the tragedy of the commons. So the commons referred refers to uh, shared resources. And these would be the resources which sustain the activity which happens in the places uh, and even along the highways and byways where humans do Congress or uh, in terms of what would be uh, considered resources that make the, the planet operable or livable and so forth. And uh, we have the tragedy of the commons. Now, there is a thinker who introduced this concept I'd like the AI co-host now to respond with information about the tragedy of the commons, attribute it to uh, who came up with it, appropriately please, give a little history there, and uh, go into an explanation of what the tragedy of the commons is and what uh, the idea is based on. Absolutely, Sean. The phrase, tragedy of the commons, was popularized by ecologist Garrett Hardin in his influential 1968 article, though the fundamental concept dates back to an essay by Victorian economist William Forster Lloyd in 1833. Hardin brings attention to the dilemma arising from the allocation of resources shared by all but owned by no one, the commons. The essence of the tragedy is simple yet profound. When individuals, acting independently according to their own self-interest, deplete or spoil shared resources through their collective action, it leads to consequences for the entire community. Hardin argued that each person is motivated by personal gain and may ultimately contribute to the overuse or devastation of these shared resources, leading to long-term losses for the group. This concept applies to various resources like public land, the air we breathe, the water in rivers and lakes, and even the Earth's climate. It's based on the understanding that common resources, without proper management or communal agreement on sustainable usage, can be overexploited since no single individual bears the full burden of the overuse, even though everyone ultimately suffers from it. With that said, it's insightful to explore how societies can manage commons to avoid such tragedies, which involves intricate environmental and economic implications. Back to you, Sean. Perhaps you could guide us further into how these implications affect our world today. Well, I think what I'll do is I'll ultimately, with this uh, entry, 
for the AI co-host. Uh, I will, AI co-host, ultimately ask you to generate an example that demonstrates uh, how uh, people or perhaps a corporation or an individual or whatever human entity or group uh, is um, perhaps interacting with the commons in an example where it is depleting the commons, that entity or group, uh, and uh, or the individual. And, uh, and uh, through this, we're going to see uh, just how this happens. We have this idea of the commons, and there is an associated tragedy, which is that the commons doesn't last the way it should because it's not respected in a way that allows it to be sustained or remain sustainable. So that, I think, more or less encapsulates what the problem is. Now, what I would be seeking from the AI co-host, as I mentioned right now, is an example which demonstrates just how this happens, and uh, it would be it would be the type of uh, story or example that would uh, paint a picture that would uh, show what uh, element represents the commons or an element of the commons, what activity is being done upon it, how it is depleted and what the consequence is for that in the larger picture or immediately uh, near to the situation. Certainly, let's consider a contemporary and tangible example, the depletion of fish stocks in international waters. The ocean's fish are a resource of the commons, belonging to no single entity, but rather shared among nations and, by extension, all individuals. A tragedy unfolds when fishing companies, driven by the profit motive, engage in overfishing. They invest in larger fleets and more efficient technologies to harvest fish at rates far exceeding the natural replenishment of the stocks. Here's how the story often develops. 1. Asterisk asterisk element representing the commons asterisk asterisk the international waters and the fish within them are the commons. They are a crucial source of sustenance and livelihood for billions of people worldwide and play a significant role in maintaining ecological balance. 2. Asterisk asterisk activity being done upon it asterisk asterisk fishing companies, due to lack of stringent international regulations or enforcement, exploit this open access condition. They compete to catch as much fish as possible, operating on the notion that if they don't, others will. 3. Asterisk asterisk how it is depleted asterisk asterisk the relentless fishing leads to a rapid decline in fish populations. Key species may become endangered, which can disrupt the entire marine food chain. The commons is depleted due to the cumulative effect of each entity extracting without restraint or reciprocal contribution to the maintenance of the resource. 4. Asterisk asterisk immediate and larger consequence asterisk asterisk in the immediate sense. The local fisheries suffer, their catches diminish, affecting their income and community sustenance. On a larger scale, the consequences are ecological imbalance, loss of biodiversity, and a threat to food security, especially for communities heavily reliant on fish for dietary needs. Moreover, it could lead to economic collapse in coastal regions, increased illegal fishing activities, and potential conflicts over dwindling fish stocks among nations. The tragedy unfolds as individual actions that may seem rational to each entity cumulatively lead to irrational and devastating outcomes. This narrative illustrates the urgent need for collective action and effective governance to manage the commons sustainably, emphasizing the dire consequences that can arise from the tragic exploitation of shared resources. And so we're talking about individual actions that may seem rational, to each entity, in the words that you used, cumulatively, this leads to irrational and devastating outcomes. Now, perhaps uh, we would delve into why entities or individuals may think that they're being rational in this situation. Uh, I wonder, AI co-host, if you would uh, lend some uh, words to whether this has anything to do with possibly uh, a shorter term strategical thinking uh, way that humans do develop sometimes when trying to, to solve the problems that are before them. 
it's been commented, I think, in terms of uh, studies about systems uh, and how they operate, that this idea, uh, and it, I think this bridges out from the, the tragedy of the commons into other concepts with relationship to systems, but uh, the inability of actors to act rationally except on behalf of themselves or in accordance with shorter term planning. I wonder if there's a, even a relationship between the two things that I mentioned. I'd like to get some feedback from the AI co-host why it is that it would appear rational to someone to deplete fish stocks while meanwhile uh, with everyone doing it and this being even perhaps a, a perceivable detail of the situation by everyone involved that everyone is doing it and that the stocks are becoming depleted. What makes it so rational, even to the point that someone will pursue it and actually do it and carry out the action of continuing to fish, even though it's kind of ruining everything, uh, to put it in a very blunt and uh, general way. Uh, what is it about that, that people have it in their heads that this is their next rational act when in fact there is an irrationality to it? The paradoxical situation you're describing, where individual rational actions lead to a collectively irrational outcome, is a central feature of the tragedy of the commons and can be understood through the lens of several concepts in economics and psychology. 1. Asterisk asterisk immediate incentives asterisk asterisk human beings are often motivated by immediate gains or short-term rewards. A fisherman, seeing profitable returns today, will prioritize those immediate benefits over the less tangible, long-term sustainability of the fish stock. This short-term thinking overshadows the long-term consequences of resource depletion. 2. Asterisk asterisk the free rider problem asterisk asterisk this is a situation where individuals or entities assume that others will bear the cost of maintaining the commons, while they can benefit without contributing to the upkeep. If everyone thinks along these lines, the resource becomes overused and eventually exhausted. 3. Asterisk asterisk lack of ownership asterisk asterisk when a resource is shared, no individual has the full incentive to conserve it because they don't reap the full benefits of its conservation nor suffer the full costs of its depletion. Without a sense of ownership, individuals may exploit the resource to avoid being left out of the games. 4. Asterisk asterisk discounting the future asterisk asterisk there's a tendency to value immediate rewards more highly than future benefits, a behavior known as hyperbolic discounting. Fishermen may discount the future health of fish stocks because the present value of a catch is more immediately compelling. 5. Asterisk asterisk prisoner's dilemma asterisk asterisk in game theory. This concept describes a situation where two parties acting in their self-interest do not produce the optimal outcome. Each fisherman is better off fishing as much as possible, as they expect others to do the same. If they restrain while others don't, they individually suffer while the collective problem persists. 6. Asterisk asterisk lack of communication and coordination asterisk asterisk there is often a lack of effective coordination and communication among the users of the commons. This makes it difficult to establish agreements that everyone feels obligated to honor. 7. Asterisk asterisk tragedy of anticipation asterisk asterisk anticipating that the resource will be depleted anyway. Individuals might hasten to exploit the remaining resources before others do, leading to an accelerated tragedy. These factors contribute to why individuals may continue to behave in ways that are ultimately destructive to the commons. It's a mixture of immediate self interest a lack of collective action, and systemic failure to regulate and manage the resource effectively. This situation requires collective agreements, strong institutions, and perhaps communal or even global enforcement mechanisms to overcome the impasse and manage the commons sustainably for the long term. Well, I've got a concept here. It answers actually quite a number of these uh, items. But uh, And you've alluded to the fact that uh, there would be perhaps communal or even global enforcement mechanisms. I have one in mind. It certainly comes with caveats and warnings and uh, should be, in a sense, almost spoken against because of the trouble it could end up causing. However, this is a discussion program. We have a very human program, uh, a very human problem uh, to discuss. 
on uh, this AI assisted uh, program, which is uh, to do with uh, what are we going to do when everything runs out and there's nothing to eat or something like that. It's an actual problem that does face populations already. People have, for example, in the world depleted the food that they relied on and then maybe even starved. There are examples of this in history. I feel quite certain about that. <clears throat> and so we wouldn't want to be the grand example where the uh, the commons is depleted beyond what where any human can benefit, and then uh, we're all gone because of that. That's an undesirable outcome. Uh, but uh, what if we applied an actual price to use of the commons? Many problems with this idea. However, it does offer solutions at the same time. Immediate incentives. If something, if there is a commons element which is being increasingly depleted, it would actually get quite expensive to go out and buy that uh, resource because of its rarity now and its importance to the commons being the more important point in calculating its cost. If this is all gone, what would the recovery cost of it be? Well, it might even be an infinite number if it's a matter of a species dying out, depending on what role that species plays in the ecosystem. So with all of that calculated, and it was, for example, cod that were going to be fished to extinction by the activity, then we would think about what the cost is uh, to either replenish that stock, repair the damage, compensate for it, and make the situation as environmentally sound as it was before. As stocks get highly depleted, one would think that uh, cost would run very high, and as such, there would be an actually bill, actually a bill attached to that. If you are the one who like took the foot, the fish out of there, it would sort of not matter if you could get what you uh, needed from the fish for that, and that may be the counter to the immediate incentives. The free rider problem also addressed through this lack of ownership. Well, I suppose it would be collectively owned, and it would be the world's people who would be billing you. I I suppose. Could be hard to coordinate. That could be a, a mark against uh, my idea. Discounting the future. Well, uh, there would be a plan at least to uh, counter this. It would become an incentive that actors in the system would have to consider. And uh, as such, it might uh, counter some hyperbolic uh, discounting and make the cost more immediate in a sense. As to the prisoner's dilemma, well, we would have a rule book to go by that says, here you are a prisoner, here's what you do instead of what you first thought of. It's a little thing called education. And here is the incentive which tells you you must essentially by this plan, or perhaps there's another. Uh, meanwhile, lack of communication and coordination, that could be something that could be addressed by the installation of some plan like this. That could be what it fatally prevents this plan from ever flying. Uh, the tragedy of anticipation, anticipating that the resource will be depleted anyway because nothing is done. Well, we're doing something. Is it good enough? Can we develop faith and hope in this plan? This has been a heck of a long entry on my part, so I'm going to kick it over to the AI co-host for the response. The idea of imposing a cost or a price on the use of the commons is a theoretical solution that draws on the principles of economics to address the issues of over-exploitation and sustainability. This approach is often referred to as internalizing the externalities. In economics, an externality is a cost or benefit that affects a party who did not choose to incur that cost or benefit. Let's explore the implications and challenges of pricing the commons in the context of your points. 1. Asterisk asterisk implementing appropriate pricing asterisk asterisk by attaching a tangible price to the use of a resource, reflecting its true environmental cost and scarcity. Users would be incentivized to use the resource more judiciously. The cost would have to be significant enough to deter overuse and fund conservation efforts. However, the challenge lies in accurately pricing the resource and achieving global consensus on valuation. 2. Asterisk asterisk global coordination and enforcement asterisk asterisk to administer such a pricing system effectively, there needs to be a global body with authority to impose and collect fees as well as regulate and enforce compliance. This would require unprecedented international cooperation and coordination, which could be difficult due to varying national interests. 3. Asterisk asterisk addressing the free rider problem asterisk asterisk a pricing system could potentially mitigate free rider behavior by ensuring that all users of the commons pay for its usage. Nonetheless, enforcement remains an issue 
as entities might seek to evade costs or exploit loopholes. 4. Asterisk asterisk preventing market failures asterisk asterisk if pricing is not managed well, it could lead to market failures where only wealthier entities can afford to access the resources, leading to inequitable usage and potential monopolization of the commons. 5. Asterisk asterisk educational and cultural shifts asterisk asterisk education would play a critical role in shifting mindsets from short-term gain to long-term resource sustainability. This cultural change is necessary to foster support for conservation measures, adherence to regulations, and an understanding of the collective benefits of a priced commons. 6. Asterisk asterisk dynamic pricing asterisk asterisk as resources become rarer, the price should increase, effectively reflecting the increased cost of depletion and offering a constant reminder of the resources diminishing availability. This dynamic pricing could encourage exploration of alternatives and innovation in resource efficiency. 7. Asterisk asterisk generating revenue for conservation asterisk asterisk money collected from the use of the commons could fund conservation efforts, research, and habitat restoration, providing a direct link between use and maintenance of the resource. 8. Asterisk asterisk trust in the system asterisk asterisk for such a system to work there must be trust that the funds are being used effectively for conservation and that the pricing is fair and accurate. Transparency and accountability would be crucial. The concept of pricing the commons addresses many of the previously mentioned factors, but it must be noted that any solution will require careful design and commitment on a global scale to overcome the considerable challenges of implementation and to ensure it does not inadvertently exacerbate inequalities or create new problems. It is a potential path forward that invites further deliberation among economists, environmentalists, policymakers, and the global community. Well, after what you've said, uh, I think that the example that occurs to me is uh, carbon pricing. Now, what I sort of figure uh, in uh, what is known as Canada, we have carbon pricing and people pay at the pump for the carbon they are ultimately putting into the atmosphere by purchasing the gas and then burning it in their vehicle. So it works on a level, but I think that actually Canada's uh, carbon scheme doesn't supply all of that money into mitigation factors or repair for the effects of climate change if that's possible to make. I think it is more about uh, something where you get a check uh, uh, which uh, mitigates what you have paid into it. I wonder if that's a factor and why it's maybe not working. I think that people are as like almost rather than to conserve the resource to complain about how much they're paying and maybe even make uh, a sacrifice in another area to compensate. Perhaps they need their vehicle for work, for example, and would need to do that driving. In such a situation, it is hard to be discouraged by the pricing from... Uh, respecting the commons by burning less carbon-containing fuel. So uh, this is referred to as a tragedy. We have the commons, and we would understand that's important, and we would understand there is a tragedy, and that it is very difficult to enforce any kind of fair or equal use of it, which is not exploitative and which doesn't end up depleting it. So it really is, uh, perhaps in the words of John Cleese, a bit of a poser. This is a problem. This is difficult to solve. It was described in uh, 1833. It may be more than just the will to solve it that makes it difficult. And this is something that should perhaps be acknowledged to the benefit of anybody who is scratching their head and perhaps even wishing to respect the commons, but not quite knowing what to do when it's time for them to feed their family. Who knows, maybe even people who uh, rely on these fisheries uh, for their sustenance don't take a lot, but do take enough to affect things by the time there aren't many left, and they see the tragedy in it. They even know what it's going to mean, but don't know what else to do because the next meal, uh, they're hungry for it. And this is actually quite human and natural. We talked about the irrationality of actors, but this becomes the, the looming rationality of where one's next meal is coming from. Maybe the problem is something that we can solve later if we get this next meal. This could be someone's actual situation as they deplete the commons, which is a tragedy. Um, is the sin upon somebody who figures that now that there is a price on this, that it is essentially a commodity and they need only pay the price? 
then they can deplete it. They can enjoy whatever delicacy or experience there is, in, is involved with those goods uh, or uh, the bodies of those animals and uh, go to town on it. And uh, who's to pay the most regret? Probably not them because they'll have uh, some other means of getting by as wealthy people uh, in the new paradigm, whatever it is, at least to a point, let's say. So AI co-host, please shun lists in your next response and uh, continuing forward. We probably had enough of lists, but uh, let's hear what you have to say in response to what I've said about, in particular, carbon pricing. Your observations on carbon pricing, particularly in the context of Canada's approach, touch on the complexities of employing economic mechanisms to address environmental issues. Carbon pricing is intended to internalize the externality of emissions by making them a cost to the producer or consumer, thereby incentivizing reduction. However, the efficacy and impact of carbon pricing are influenced by several factors. In Canada's case, the policy is designed not only to discourage carbon emissions by assigning a price but also to mitigate the economic impact on consumers through rebates aiming for a balance between environmental incentives and socio-economic fairness. Whether carbon pricing succeeds depends on how it affects the behavior of different stakeholders. 1. Asterisk asterisk consumer response asterisk asterisk in theory, pricing should signal consumers to adjust behavior, such as reducing fuel consumption or investing in energy-efficient technologies. However, this assumes price elasticity, where prices impact consumer behavior. If driving is a necessity rather than a discretionary activity, higher prices may have a limited effect on reducing consumption, instead, they may cause financial strain, prompting dissatisfaction. 2. Asterisk asterisk revenue allocation asterisk asterisk a key aspect is how the revenue from carbon pricing is used. Redirecting funds towards actionable climate solutions, like renewable energy, public transport, or energy efficiency programs could yield a double dividend by curtailing emissions and advancing the green economy. If rebates are meant to dull the pricing impact, they might lessen the sting but also undermine the goal of behavioral change. 3. Asterisk asterisk fairness and equity asterisk asterisk the design of carbon pricing schemes needs to consider equity implications, since low-income households may be disproportionately affected by increased costs relative to their income. A judicious rebate policy is an attempt to address this issue, but navigating the line between fairness and environmental effectiveness is challenging. 4. Asterisk asterisk scope and coverage asterisk asterisk carbon pricing needs to be comprehensive in its application, encompassing as much of the economy as possible to avoid blind spots where emissions can continue unchecked. 5. Asterisk asterisk behavioral and cultural changes asterisk asterisk the transition to a low-carbon economy requires both technological change and shifts in consumption patterns and cultural norms, encouraging a rethinking of how and why we consume resources. Carbon pricing is a tool but not a silver bullet. Broader societal engagement is essential. 6. Asterisk asterisk global action asterisk asterisk climate change remains a global commons issue with actions in one country affecting the planet. A patchwork approach where some countries adopt carbon pricing while others do not can lead to competitive disadvantages and emissions leakage, where production shifts to countries with laxer standards. 7. Asterisk asterisk perception and communication asterisk asterisk how carbon pricing is perceived by the public, whether as a just measure for environmental protection or as an unjustified charge, matters greatly. Effective communication around the purpose, benefits, and use of revenues can influence public support or opposition. In summary, carbon pricing can play a pivotal role in efforts to conserve the commons and avert environmental tragedy. However, its design requires careful attention to economic behaviors, needs, equity considerations, overall policy coherence, and above all, clarity in communication. Without holistic strategies and widespread buy-in, carbon pricing risks being seen as a punitive measure rather than a transformative tool for change. Well, so here we have, again, I will uh, indicate and emphasize this is not the slightly troubling bother to do with the commons. This is the tragedy of the commons. This is, in fact, a deeply difficult problem to solve unless everybody is really, really interested in it. 
Uh, now, this could become, to my mind, an element of education in society. We can try to boss everybody into doing the right thing, or we can merely explain to them there is a principle here, and in the end, here are some things that are important. We would like your buy-in on this for these very sensible reasons. Yes, we will mix in things like compassion and empathy and respect in order to say what is important about them. However, we've got uh, what is logically a problem if we don't solve it, having described it and seen what the logical end of it is without countering it, we can see how almost any system will be depleted of resources or potentially have what sustains that system destroyed through overuse because of short-term rational thinking, which adds up to a long, longer-term irrationality. Now, we can be creative with uh, things like regulations, and ultimately, maybe that is what we'll have to do, and, and there may be a component there. It may give people the the backstop against which to understand, you know, this could actually work if we invested in it, as opposed to having no rule and just saying, well, I'm nice and they'll be nice. People logically don't accept that because it may not hold up all that well logically that this is uh, what's going to come to pass. So we would put a system and a backstop. We would educate people about what is important about any of this stuff, including maybe the subject of what particular element of the commons if it's the carbon element of the atmosphere, or if it is fish stocks in general, or a particular fish stock, or if it is a forest resource, we would put that education into society. People would understand about this. Collectively, if more people invested their attention into understanding this is important, they might want to protect it from quote unquote bad actors who might destroy it anyway, or figure they can afford it or something now that it's been commoditized. So it occurs to me that when we try to internalize the externality, which is to say, instead of making it this sort of airy-fairy thing, which has no meaning or consequence or number attached to it, defining it through uh, assigning a cost to it, it looks like a price to some. So it's almost like you're, you're sort of gosh darned if you do, and you're gosh darned if you don't. It is the tragedy of the commons, as has been indicated after all. With that... I'm Sean McNutt, and this has been A Guy with AI. Indeed, Sean, the tragedy of the commons presents a multifaceted challenge requiring the collective will and concerted effort of society. Education stands as a fundamental tool for fostering a deeper understanding of environmental stewardship and collective action. As you suggest, when societies embrace a principle-driven approach grounded in compassion and rational foresight, they stand a greater chance at solving or mitigating the complexities of common resource management. It is crucial to recognize the nuanced balance between incentivizing the right actions through policy and cultivating a culture that inherently values the commons for the greater good. But as you aptly noted, even with measures such as pricing in place, the responsibility ultimately falls upon individuals and communities to collaborate and uphold these ideals. To our listeners, Thank you for joining us on this journey through the intricacies of the tragedy of the commons. We hope that this conversation has offered you food for thought and inspiration to engage with these pressing issues. Your participation is invaluable in these dialogues for the betterment of our shared environment. We invite you to subscribe, like, and share this podcast, and to join us for future episodes. For more engaging content and to continue the conversation, Please make a guy with AI.world your portal to podcast platforms and YouTube. You can also connect and contribute to the discussion on Facebook through the link on that webpage. Thank you for dedicating your time to A Guy with AI. We look forward to your thoughts and contributions and encourage you to tune in as we explore more human problems and AI assisted insights together. Until next time, take care and be part of the solution. 